Simbonath Kapaleo was born in 1914 in Shigonas. The former cane worker and store attendant, who was later dubbed the Lion of the Legislative Council, was a prominent Hindu politician and lawyer, a father of three, and the uncle of the man the world would come to know as Sivvidya Naipaul. Simbunath's foray into the politics of Trinidad and Tobago began in 1946 when he contested the Karani seat in the Legislative Council. It was an unsuccessful bid, but Capaldeo had another hurdle to overcome, and this one affected people who could not pass the illiteracy test. You have to go back to the time when there was no adult suffrage. We had to fight to become eligible to vote because the first adult suffrage uh, constitution program that came out was that you could only vote if you could read and write English. And that disenfranchised, but that would have disenfranchised a large number of the community. So we began a battle to get the right to vote from that time. Capaldeo was the second son of three born to Pundit Capaldeo, an immigrant from Uttar Pradesh, India. Upon the death of his elder brother Omkar and his father in 1926, Simbunath became the family patriarch. As a child, he recalled that his father kept in touch with his homeland by writing letters in the original Hindi. And when he died, Simbunath's mother, Sugi, encouraged him to follow the tradition. While my father was alive, he kept up a steady stream of correspondence with them, regular. After he died, my mother insisted that I carry on the correspondence, which I did in my broken Hindi and so on, but I did carry on some kind of letter writing. They would reply to me. So when I went to India, I did not go as a stranger. I was the person who used to write letters. So I was welcomed back like a prodigal son who had come from foreign. Pundit Kapaldeo built the Lion House on the main road in Shigonas. The Lion House is one of the most famous architectural icons representing the Indian heritage in this country. It is also one of the inspirations for the writings of Kapildeo's nephew, Vidya Naipaul. As far as Naipaul is concerned, he was born practically in my lap, so to speak. As a child, I was very close to him. Even when he had his scholarship problems, I took up the, the case and went to Thomas Kershaw, who went to the Executive Council and got his scholarship ratified. All that time, he lived near to me. His mother and his father lived in the same, almost in the same house with us, and we were all close together as one knit family. So even, uh, even after he passed, uh, when he went to Oxford, I went to visit him in Oxford. From Oxford, when he came back to Trinidad, he sat downstairs, you saw the library, where he spent most of his time reading and writing. The first book, Mystic Matthew, wrote there. Miguel Street was written right there, and then Suffrage of Vada, was written there in 1956. Simbunath Kapildeo was content to be a cane farmer and a store clerk. But his ambition changed when a classmate returned home after studying medicine in Ireland. And it was then that Kapildeo recognized that he could do more with his life. From school, I went to the cane field. I like to feel that those few years in the cane field did me a lot of good because I saw at first hand the difficulties of the cane farmer and the sugar worker. And I decided in my mind that if I could do something to alleviate their problems, I would do it in later life. And I think I got an opportunity in the parliament, and I did, every time I did so. From, from being a, a cane farmer, my mother used to run a small shop, and a, gro a grocery and a cloth store. And then I came to the grocery and cloth store to help her in that store. And, I remained there for a few years, and I branched out in a, in a branch in San Fernando. And from there, it is while I was a solicitor, while I was, while I was in this store that I decided that it's time for me to do something else. Because I had good certificates from QRC, and I was doing nothing with them cutting cloth. In 1943, after he became a solicitor and conveyancer, and began practicing in San Fernando, Capaldeo used his training to fight for the rights of women. Well, there was a time when 
Hindu women and Indian women were discriminated against, particularly Muslim women. I like to feel that I made them human beings. When I say that, perhaps you don't know that there was a Muslim Islamic law at that time. I'm talking about 56 to 66. There was an Islam Islamic law in which a, a husband could tell the wife, I divorce you, I divorce you, I divorce I you. I remember that. And that is finished. She, she had no rights again. She could have 20 children and she could have been his wife for 40 years, but she had no rights again. And I thought that was a, a terrible injustice to the Muslim women. I remember having tried something in, in the Kuva court. I made a woman who came to me for, she had this problem. Her husband had divorced her. So I made her file two cases, one as a married woman and one as a, a mother of bastard children. It came before the court and she could succeed neither way because she was not a married woman, she had been divorced. And when the children were born, she was lawfully married, so she was a mother, not a bastard mother. So there was nothing. And then I thought that we went, we went to Parliament with that. And I think that is my most significant contribution to Trinidad and its women folk. He was a member of Parliament from 1956 to 1966. And during that time, he fought for the rights of the sugar worker. I hope to put the case for the sugar worker before the, the, the country. And I think I succeeded in that. Because I remember one particular incident when Sir Hal Robinson was speaking. All I got up and said was, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Speaker, whatever Sir Hal says, just bear in mind that I am speaking, I am saying the opposite things. And I sat down. Because he is for the sugar barons and I am for the sugar workers. And I sat down. That was my speech. Yes, the anti Robinson at that time. Mind you, I used to work for the, the Robinsons in the sugar estate. I used to weigh canes for a little while. And I saw what happened to the, the Indian laborers, Indian cane farmers. And it was really something grueling for them to have to sell one ton of cane to that farm. I like to feel that I was one of the pioneers in those days. Mind you, I'm not denigrated what Sukaran did, what Mitra Senan did, what Bades did. But I like to feel that I was part of that team that fought for the sugar cane farmer and the sugar worker. Simbunath was the elder brother of Dr. Rutranat Kapildeo, who formed the Democratic Labour Party. But their relationship soured as a result of political differences. I didn't voluntarily leave the DLP. I was in the DLP until 1966. But in 66, my brother had taken complete control over the Indian politics. I, I, I put that in inverted commas, Indian politics. And if you didn't get on his side, you were nothing. So Peter Farquhar, myself, and Taj Mahal thought that we could only get our voices heard if we had another party, and that's how the Liberal Party was formed. Capildeo was also an important leader of the Hindu community in Trinidad and Tobago, and played a role in the founding of the Sanatan Dharma Mahasapha. I like to feel that I was one of the parents of the Mahasapha. In 1950, I was in England for a short while. I had an interview with Mr. Krishna Menon, and by his inspiration, I came back home to Trinidad to find that the Hindu community had been split up into five groups. The Hindu Board of Control, the Hindu Association, the Kabir Panthi, the Arya Samaj, and the Sunrayan Panth. But in those days, the, the non in Hindu, non-Hindu power divided the Hindu community permanently into five incorporated bodies, which meant that like, having regard to the tendency of the Hindu, they could bring no coagulation again. But a number of people, namely people like Ram Surat Singh and Ram Prasad, Hiral Ram Prasad and so on, a number of people of us got together and decided that this is nonsense, that we, we are not big enough to take care of our own affairs and we decided to merge the Board of Control and the Association. Simbunath fought for Hindu schools to be built in this country, and he successfully saw 41 institutions built under his leadership of the Mahasapa. So that the people in certain areas who never saw a school for generations, I could tell you in, in, in 1952, I checked out a village in Pinal, and there were several homes, one after the other in the in rice field, because the houses were built inside the rice field. 
There are several homes inside the rice field where the children had not gone to school for four generations. The father had come from India, the son, his son, his son, his son. The dad, they had not gone to school for four generations. I came and pointed that out to the Minister of Education, the, the Director of Education, Mr. Morland Hopkins in those days. He sent down and got, he himself carried out a survey. And then he called me and said, I was done by on the board, the Mahasabha board. He says, you have permission now to build six schools in that area. Go and choose the locations and find out where you'll put the schools. And that's how six of those schools were built at that time. The construction of the schools accomplished another purpose. It ensured that Hindu professionals could be employed. I'm talking about the time when no Hindu could become a headmaster unless he went and baptized himself to be a Christian. You had to be a baptized to get, to get a job. The Canadian missions gave all the jobs. And if you went there and said, I want a job to teach, are you a Hindu? Yes, no job for you. You have to baptize, you have to become a Christian, then you get a job. And we found that irksome, irritated. Some of us who were concerned about the Hindu community found that very, very hard to bear. And we fought it. After more than 30 years in politics in Trinidad and Tobago, and after having fought for and won the rights for Hindus to construct schools of their choosing, Simbunath Kapildeo died in 1990, one year after he received the Shikonia Gold Medal for service to his country.